All right. Hey guys, it's Monday night. It's October 8th and I am Julie getting to be D tonight hosting our meeting. Um, I just muted all of us just for the recording, but we're going to have a few minutes at the end that I want to take everybody off mute um, and just have a time where we can ask questions and this just to be a real place and open up and ask away because the topic that we're talking about tonight is healthy mind. And I love um, that Meg did that Facebook Live, if you haven't watched it in our group and our coach page. It's exactly what we're talking about tonight. Um, how to keep your head, how to stay above board, how to play above the line, how to keep your health, healthy mindset. Because like Meg said, and like if you've been doing coaching or had your own business before, I think that's probably one of the toughest things about us being coaches is that it is all how do you manage the good times, the frustrations, the challenges, the celebrations, like it can, it can change from minute to minute when you're an entrepreneur. Um, and if, you've, if you're used to being just an employee, that's a totally different mindset because you go into work, you sit at your desk, you do your job, it may be good, it may be bad, but it's not like running a business and having clients and coaches that you're supporting and you get one text that makes you excited and you get another text that just bums you out, right? From minute to minute. Um, so how do you manage all that and keep your head in the game and not give up? Because something that I thought about is when I first started coaching, um, I remember so many times something would happen and I'd, I'd see like in my emails that a client had canceled their account or I would be so excited about a call that was coming up and then five minutes before they'd have to cancel. Like how many of us have had, raise your hand if that's happened to you like in the past week. <laughs> it's so frustrating when you're excited about a person, you know the potential and then they cancel. Um, and that hurts. It hurts a lot and it stings a lot. Um, but my encouragement is as you keep growing, those, those, those disappointments hurt less and less because you have more and more people that you're helping and more and more coaches that you're supporting. Um, so that's, that's one thing that's been a game changer is me looking now, if I were to tell myself three years ago, just keep going, just keep going because those disappointments, those band-aids that you feel like you keep getting ripped off, they hurt less and less as you keep coaching. And the more people you're helping, it's spread, spread across less. It's spread across more. So those things hurt less. So one of my big encouragements is to how do you, how do you manage the disappointments? It's just keep going and keep on, keep on pursuing those people on your heart and keep on growing your circles of influence. And that's, that's one of the things that I um, was going to talk about is if you guys saw that trilogy wheel that I posted the picture of, there's, there's like six main things that are in that um, healthy mind component, and it's strong relationships, engagement at work, fulfillment, spiritual time, community involvement, and then hobbies and fun. So I feel like it's really neat as, as coaches, what our world revolves around hopefully is a lot of fun for you. And if you're not having fun, that's probably a conversation you want to have with your business coach, because what we should be doing is a blast. Um, and if you have the perspective, um, a healthy mindset, it will be a lot of fun. So Joanna is uh, joining us. Let me uh, see. Do you want to take yourself off mute, Joanna? If not, I can unmute you. Oh, my thing. There you go. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. So Joanna is one of the coaches here in Charlotte, and we all got together. Zena was here, Joanna, Jen, Dee was here. We got to have a meeting last month. Katie came, um, and it was, it was great to hear coaches share, and I think that that's one of the powerful things is staying engaged in our community um, because you can hear every coach share from a different perspective, and it was just neat and powerful. And one of the things that Joanna has done a phenomenal job with is how do you continue to open up and enlarge your circles of influence? And that's probably one of the biggest struggle that I hear from new coaches is, well, who am I going to help? Like who, who else, what am I doing? Um, I've tried the people at work. I've tried my friends and family. They are not interested. They're not open. And it may just be a timing thing. Um, and most likely it probably is because what you will see as a coach is the more you develop personally, the more they see you helping people, those people that you've dripped on and planted seeds will eventually come back. 
Um, but what's neat is watching Joanna, she has so many neat ideas and has been growing those circles of influence. So Joanna, do you want to kind of just share what you've, all your creative ideas and what's been working for you? Yeah. So sorry guys, I got Eric shared his cold with me. <laughs> so my voice has been in and out today. Um, so obviously y'all know that I'm like big orange theory person and, um, just have developed like a love for running. I never was, um, a runner and now I just absolutely love running. So, um, not everybody can get to the gym and it was just really on my heart to form like a walk slash jog slash run group, um, just for women, whether they were my current clients, previous clients, referrals that hadn't signed up yet, or just friends in general, or just friends of friends. And so, um, I did a live Facebook recording, um, probably about two and a half, three and a half weeks ago, put it out there and then, um, got a lot of feedback from a bunch of people, people from Orange Theory, head coaches from Orange Theory, um, and then just friends. And so I picked a general um, spot and just said, all right, we're going to start here and I'm going to do every Monday um, evening. Hopefully it's a good time for everybody and I'm going to be there at six o'clock and you can bring your kids. They can bring their rollerblades. They can bring their stroller. I mean, whatever you need to do to get your family there, your kids there do it. And, um, cause I, and one reason I picked Monday was it's a fresh start to the week. So if you can get out and you can be active for 30 minutes, whether it's walking, jogging, or a mix of that, it's going to help you to make hopefully healthier choices. And then what I ended up doing was, um, I posted a couple different little things that encourage people. And then I took, um, a running log with me or walking log, um, that I bought. It could buy them off of Etsy. It's like a buck and then um, printed it off, took it, and everybody that's been coming, I'm like, here's a log, it's 31 days. You can record it when we meet here. You can record it throughout um, the next, whatever it is, 31 activities, and you see how far you walk or run um, during the month. Um, and that's just been really, everybody's like, whoa, this is so nice. And then, you know, I, my next goal that I'm wanting to do once this kind of gets going is, um, we all have these holiday party social events coming up and I really want to like help people just, you know, whether they want to do the plan or whatever their heart is, but open it up to start questions and Hey, do you need help getting to where you feel confident or you can fit in this, you know, holiday dress? So, um, I'm going to start like posting things like that and then hopefully get, you know, either be able to do a free health assessment or, you know, get them to come and walk and run and then slowly start that conversation that way. And a lot of like our Orange Theory people were very supportive. And I was even um, asked um, to come and represent at the Tri Trump. Um, it was a triathlon that was done this past weekend and was able just to put um, Optavia out and have, you know, athletes and family members and friends and spectators just come over, um, whether they just looked or they filled out, like, hey, I want to have more. So it's just kind of allowing yourself to be vulnerable and being there for people. And, you know, I'm passionate about running and I don't expect everybody to come out. So like my goal going forward with like the run group as it continues to develop, because I want to be able to run, but I'm not going to leave my people back that want to walk is I want to have somebody that's going to be a leader of the walk group and they can be, you know, you can come up with like cute little names. Like we've got the latte group and blah, blah, blah is going to be in charge of the latte walking group. And then we've got the espresso group and, um, they're going to be the runners and you know, whatever you need to do, but you have to find something that you love and that you're passionate about. And maybe running and walking isn't your thing. So you have to figure out as a coach, how can you connect with people? And I cannot tell you, I told Julie when we talked about it, after I did my live report, um, recording, we have a local restaurant that um, my husband and I go to about two days, three days a week. They have healthy, clean food. And I had people come up and go, I want more information on your walk run group. And they had just seen my, my live video because I tagged friends in it that I knew would be interested and it got to them. So you never know who you're truly impacting. And just because people don't comment on those live videos and on your transformation stories, it doesn't mean that they're not paying attention. They are, they're just not ready to start commenting. So don't get yourself down. If you post something and you're like, 
I only got two likes because people are watching, but they're just not ready to comment or they're going to private message you or call you and personally talk to you. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Don't beat yourself up when you put something and you're like, I poured my heart out and I didn't get any response. People are watching. So keep doing what you're doing. Awesome. Exactly. And I think what's so neat about our community is that we all have different interests and different passions. And what, what we can all bring to the table is our uniqueness. So as I've talked to new coaches and as I talk to people in, in Charlotte and elsewhere, I think Melissa's on now from Hawaii. Hey girl. Um, so it's, it's fun to figure out what are you passionate about? What is, what is it that makes you excited? If it's not something like running or walking, maybe you're a craft person. Maybe you enjoy doing um, community service. And there was a call when I first started coaching that it really impacted me and I have never forgot it. It was one of the Monday night leadership calls and I don't even remember who led, but they talked about putting yourself at the center of a circle and then thinking about all the other circles in your world. So like maybe it's where you work out. Maybe it's where you go with your husband out to eat. Maybe it's your husband's family, your family, your friends. Maybe it's your kids' schools. Maybe it's a parent's group. Maybe it's a um, maybe it's at work. So there's all these little bubbles that kind of come off around you. And if you can remember that and think about it, have you shared with all those different circles that you are involved in? Do they all know you're a health coach? Um, what do you talk about when you're with them? And it's always, it's always fun because when I go places, people are like, Oh my gosh, tell me, I saw your story, that girl and that post and everybody wants to know. And I can guarantee you that they're saying the same thing about you. And when you're out and about, they're watching your posts. And like Joanna said, they may not be commenting right now, but just remember they're all watching. Um, so that was something that Courtney posted in our group today was who has some good like social media tips. And I can't, encourage you guys enough to listen to the Monday night leadership calls. If you don't already listen to them, they are awesome. And the one from two weeks ago, I couldn't listen to live. Um, but I don't know, did anybody get to listen to Carol hips and Dr. A and Jen Jones, Katie's raising her hand share like two weeks ago it was on a Monday night. It was awesome about how to be authentic. And that's one of the things with healthy mind is how to, how do you have authentic relationships with people when it kind of feels like, we're behind a screen a lot of the time, right? <laughs> like we're messaging people, we're texting them, we're, we're kind of from behind. But one of the things that I think it was Jen shared was how her Facebook posts are just an extension of what's going on in her life, in her world, with her kids, with her husband, whatever's happening, she shares that on Facebook. And that's what I think if you guys and myself, if we're all sharing authentically on Facebook and it's just an extension of your world, people want what you have. So the more you can just be real and be authentic on Facebook, that's probably going to be the biggest way you're going to grow your business. If you're not a Facebook person, work with your business coach and figure out what you're comfortable with because starting somewhere is better than nothing. Um, one other tip that they shared about social media that I think really was powerful um, is make it all about them. So sharing posts that are going to reach other people is what's most powerful. So it's always fun to put your pictures up there and your own transformations. But think about when they, when they teach us, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care about them, right? So if they keep seeing pictures of you, they think all you're doing is promoting yourself, right? So think about what's bigger and what's broader. And like the what are some of the healthy recipes that have changed your cooking for your family? Think about some of the other clients on your team and other coaches that you can celebrate and think about um, just some inspiring, what, what did you wake up inspired by and share that on social media? So if you can be thinking about them, I can guarantee your whole business will change because nobody really cares about you. Let's just be honest. They care about them and they want to know how their world's going to change right? I mean, that's kind of the blatant, blunt truth. They just want to know, how am I going to get healthy and feel better? And I want to fit in a dress by Christmas. So that's what they want to know. So how, how are you reaching those people? And what are your posts saying? Is it about you or is it about them? So the more you can put those out there, you guys, it will, it will totally change your business. Um, so go listen to the, it was September 24th, 
leadership replay. And that was, that was an awesome one. Um, and there was a book and because there's a couple of Ron Blue people on here, when I first started in finance, my first office career, um, one of the books that my the advisor I worked for had me read was a book called It's All About Them. And that was when I was like 22 years old. And it totally rocked how I thought about people. And what am I doing here? What's my purpose? And as coaches, we just probably we're here because we want to help people, right? And we feel so good. We want them to feel that good. Um, so that, that was some of the things in a nutshell I was going to share. One of the things that I know comes along with social media is kind of this, um, this feeling sometimes of being vulnerable or maybe shame um, about where your journey, like, okay, I, how did I get to 20 pounds heavy, heavier than my norm? Or how did I get 100 pounds over my goal weight? How am I going to share that on social media? Because I'm ashamed of, of that story and that that's my life. And I don't want to broadcast that to the whole social media world, right? Is that, raise your hand if that's something you've struggled with as a coach or, I, I, I don't know if any of you guys struggle with that, but it's kind of a, um, it's a vulnerability thing and being able to be real with people. But I think it comes from what perspective you share your posts and your story. And I think like Pat has some awesome, you've got some awesome posts about how your world has changed and it comes from a place of caring. Um, and it's just neat to see how that impacts people. Um, Carol, would you be up for sharing for just a quick check a second about what we were talking about, how it's just been a neat, neat thing for you to be able to help people with what's been your, your biggest struggle. Um, actually, and right now it's, kind of harder for me to share because I am like like Meg was talking about and this I am kind of in a downtime having a lot of uh, clients pulling away or whatever it's kind of hard wanting to help them more uh, than they seem to want it themselves right now but um, the big thing for me is just knowing what a big change it's made in my life and knowing what a huge struggle I've had all my life not only with my weight itself but my mindset and community and a lot of things um and just the fact that this program just totally changed my life and to know that well and like let me backtrack another big thing is i just i did not feel like i had a purpose mm. you know you get up every day you go to work you know you work hard don't have a social life you come home you're tired and you go to sleep and you start over again it's like there's got to be more and so the mind was the big thing for me. And just this program was just a huge change for me. And pretty quickly, I mean, just the motivation of wanting to do it and, uh, and then figuring out that I actually could use my struggles, my past that has always been uh, difficult for me as something to help others. Cause I know there's others that have the same thing. Um, so that's just helped my heart and and to know that there's a to use that you know you, you not only see the purpose for the future but it gives you uh a little better understanding of the past and how you can use that in a better way to help others because you can kind of understand in a way obviously no one understands totally what somebody else is going through but you have a you have an idea what they could be going through so yeah so anyway that's, that's that's been a big thing for me. That's so helpful. And what what made you decide to put that on Facebook? Like, be vulnerable because that was probably a hard thing for you too, right? Like putting all that oh, out yeah. there. <laughs> so, what helped uh, you? Well, again, because I I'm trying to broaden the circle, and I'm having people uh, that maybe they aren't ready, but there again, I'm thinking, okay, maybe there's somebody out there that can read this post, and it'll reach them because they're not going to reach out. Um, I happened to see a flyer at work. So I thought, okay, this is their flyer <laughs> trying to get to them wherever they are. So that that's why I do it. Yeah. Cause you, yeah, if one person's life has changed, it's worth it. Right. Yeah, it has been. That's what, that's what keeps me going. Just like what Meg said, you know, that picture over there in the square <laughs> of my sister Pat and just, but just knowing how many people I have helped because I said yes, and maybe wouldn't have if I hadn't said yes, and just seeing their change and the changes that they're making. So, and again, I had to look at long-term 
again, the mindset thing, the cruise opportunity is a great thing to really push you to do things you wouldn't normally do. But it also was almost like this chain for me because I felt pressure that I needed to do things quickly. Because if I don't do it and I'm losing clients and it's not going to, finally I had to let go of that and say, where are you now versus a year ago? And look at the long term. And so that's what I had to do. Absolutely. And if I don't make the cruise, okay. But I'm doing better things and I'll eventually get more clients and, and, it, and it'll work out the way it's supposed to. That's the way I have to, you know, just tell my mind and yeah. just keep at it. So. And look at how you've grown and look at all the progress and all of that's happened. You know, like that, that is what I definitely say, focus, focus on that. <laughs> it's, it's not about, it's not, a, it's a great incentive, like you said, but it's not, that's not why we coach. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So I, um, I just want to take a few seconds. Does anybody want to raise your hand or have any input about how they got comfortable? I know Lauren, you shared last week about that and had awesome ideas about being vulnerable and your willingness to share. Does anybody else have other things they've worked through? Joanna? Hold on one sec. Um, there you go. go ahead. So this, we had Julie and I talked earlier last week about this. And so I was talking with Eric, my husband about some stuff. And obviously I was very open before I even became a coach to posting my transformation. Cause I was just so impressed, but to kind of make it relatable to like, when I started thinking through it, um, I was obviously married, um, before my husband that I have now, and it was a very bad marriage. And when I went through my divorce, um, I was very, um, ashamed. I felt very unworthy. I felt like I was walking around with a big red D that just was blinking going, Oh, divorce. Nobody's going to love you. Nobody's going to want you. You failed at your marriage and all this stuff. And, you know, I felt so ashamed, but through the healing and counseling that I went through, I was able to release that. And so that was how, like, when Julie was asking me questions about how do you get past being ashamed if somebody's ashamed, all I can tell you is that I have even been able to touch some of my newer clients who I've known for years that are going through a divorce now. So you never know what you're posting is going to affect and how it can help somebody. And my philosophy behind what I put out there, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, whatever, is if it can touch one person's life, whether it's through this health thing or something else, then I'm doing what I need to do and I'm being a light and you have to be willing to step sometimes out of your comfort zone to do that. And just know that when you do that, somebody is applauding you and somebody's going, I want to be that girl. I want that. So when you, when you have something kind of coming at you going, don't do it, don't do it. Really, that's the devil or whatever you believe in coming at you. And you have to go, no, it's going to, because they don't want you to touch somebody else's life. So just know that if you're willing to take that chance and that risk, step out, be bold. As I always said, be bold and be beautiful and be brave because you don't know who you're going to touch. That's awesome. Does anybody else want to share or? share a positive thing or something that's been on your mind or something that you're wanting to work into. This is our five minutes. If you guys want to be open and feel free, can, I don't know if I can see everybody. Let's see. I'll share. Go for it, Zena. <laughs> well, you know, it's, this is not one of my issues, you know, um, approaching anybody but what I just wanted to say is you know when you think about um, I, I'm afraid to open up or I'm afraid to share everybody else out there they're feeling that way so you're not you know when you start to open up I mean I'm not afraid to share and I I do this but I'm just saying what I've got to really see is that people out there they're afraid. They're afraid to come forward. They're afraid to say things. So when you, when I do, they're like, they're, they're, that's stuff that they wish they could say, or they want to hear, or they need to hear. So, um, you know, I, I remember when I was 60 pounds heavier and I would be embarrassed to go into a room or walk backwards or whatever. Um, I, I, I always got to hear that. People 
they're only thinking about themselves and um, they're worrying about themselves. So, you know, that made me approach people more knowing that, I don't know if this is making sense, but, um, you know, I realized people are insecure, people are afraid, people are, uh, have all of those insecurities. So it just allowed me to open up to everyone a lot easier because, you know, they just, it, it gets other people to, to open up more. So that was. I, I think that's great. And I think people just want to be led and they want to guide. And that's what's fun for us is they're looking, they watch us on social media. They watch us when you're out and about, they see you at church, they see you everywhere and they're watching. Well, how does Julie handle that? Or how does Zena handle that? Um, how does she live? You know, so they, they just want somebody to guide them and show them the way. And that's what's so neat is we have, we have an awesome tool, you know, like that's exactly what they're looking for. Um, so the more you can just think about it, like Zena said, is keep them as your perspective versus looking at yourself. Um, it will, it will empower you to do more because you'll think about how it will impact other people. And it's not just about you and being afraid. It's more about them and how you can impact other people. And, and, and sometimes I feel like, and I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I get caught up in the fact that we get paid as coaches, the, the way we get paid, you sometimes feel like you're doing sales, right? Like this is sales. Like, I don't want to do that. So I, I mean, even three years in as a coach, I still sometimes step back and I'm like, Ugh. but then I have to remember, I'm like, you know what? We're not selling anything. We're offering this hope to people and this gift. We are just, that's the transactional part of the relationship we're focused on the transformational part, right? Like the people, their hearts, their bodies, their lives, their families. So if you can keep that as your perspective of, this is why I'm coaching, it's about the transformation of people, that transactional part just happens behind the scenes. Yeah, Katie. Um, I just think that, you know, hearing this, the word shame a couple of times tonight is I think we women, have, have tended to shame ourselves for one reason or another. And my, my perspective is there's no shame in the struggles you've been through and sharing those. And when you share that and you share your struggles, you become real to people yeah. and they're like looking at you like, okay, she's actually had, some bad things in her life happen like I have. So maybe, you know, I can trust what she's saying. Um, so I think that's important as women to, cause I've had three people to tell me today in different circumstances that I love your pose. I love what you're doing. You have no clue how, you know, you've inspired me and, the the thing about posting i think i've gotten the most from is if you do it like you're saying if you keep it kind of broad and inspiring and encouraging then i mean i've reached a woman who is going through a separation the same quote hit her that hit somebody who wants to lose weight who hit another person who can't remember the last thing but it was like three different circumstances was the same quote, but it was just the inspiration and the, you know, like you said, you think of, you have, like, I try to have one person in my mind when I see something and that could be me. Like you're saying, when you wake up, you feel inspired, but it could be a client or it could be somebody else that you know, who's going through a struggle. And then, you just put it out there and people just are like, Oh my God, how did she know I was thinking that today? So just don't feel shameful. I mean, be proud to be who you are and where you've been and share that and you'll really connect to people. That's so awesome. And I'm glad. Thanks for sharing that Katie. Mm -hmm. um, I think just because of time, it's a little bit after eight. So I know we want to jump on Dr. A's thing, but one of my favorite quotes is use your trials as your testimony. Um, so as you go, go about your week and as you're posting mm -hmm. and as you're reaching out to people, everything we've gone through is for a reason, right? So use that to help the next person. So just think about that as you're, 
as you're sharing and as you're um, passing on this gift we have. So we can continue the discussion in our group. We'll end this for tonight, but I'm glad you guys got to join and I hope this was helpful for y'all. Thank you. See you guys later. Bye.